Genadjana Salakaya Taksu Un Militam Yenatas Mai Sri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yenavutale Svayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyat Yare Sitarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasani Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Banchakalpa, uh, Tarubhishya, Kripa Sindhu, Vevacha, Patitanam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaho Namaha. So before I begin, I'm going to speak a little bit about steadiness and devotional service. But before I begin, I just want to preface the talk with um, the fact that uh, we've been having these discussions ever since uh, the beginning of March, I mean, I'm sorry, the middle of March, to be exact, March 22nd was the first program we had, and it's been going on steady since March 22nd, so that is practically six months now. And uh, many of you have been regularly attending these discussions on different subjects, I just want to emphasize that uh, aside from uh, the knowledge that we are been discussing and the interaction and the different questions that um, one of the purposes of this whole forum is to inspire the devotees to take up additional devotional service in the form of well, of course, additional can be in two categories, qualitative and quantitative. But particularly, we're in a situation in, in this historical time in this world where, where things are on the social, political, economic, and moral level are being tossed around uh, quite regularly in terms of things are getting worse in all these areas. Um, so, of course, the need has always been there, but even some, even more now, there is a great need to uh, reach out to the conditioned souls in the form of various types of programs to acquaint them with Krishna consciousness, to uh, continue to inspire them in spiritual life. Um, the idea is that we want to inspire devotees to become teachers, preachers, uh, instruments for Srila Prabhupada's mercy in the world. So we have mentioned this before, but I think it's important to again repeat it that devotees should think, what can I do uh, to be uh, more of a factor in giving Krishna consciousness to myself and also to others. And of course, we've had lessons in a practical way on how we can do that. And that became part of our discussion in some of the previous uh, weeks. But we'll go over that again in the future. But for now, I just want to think, I think it's important that we really reflect that we are in a very uh, time uh, difficult situation in the world. And Krishna consciousness really is the only practical spiritual solution to the problems of the world. Nobody has any answers, including many of the other religious people in the world. But we have the answers, we have the philosophy, we have the practical understanding. We need to reach out to people and explain to them, help them understand that taking up spiritual life means uh, fulfilling 
all their needs and at the same time being protected from the dangers of this material world, which are continuously coming in, in different forms. Okay, with that much said, I'll begin today's lesson and we'll discuss what is called steadiness. Steadiness in devotional service may have different meanings and people have a different way to describe steadiness. One may be steady in following the four regulative principle and chanting their rounds every day. It also may mean that one is steady in performing their duties. But these are physical symptoms that may not really indicate what is real steadiness. Real steadiness is described as Nasta Prayeshu Abhadresha Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nasta Prayeshu means when all the inauspicious uh, desires, material desires in the heart are eradicated or lessened, then steadiness becomes a factor of one's existence. To be very specific, Srila Prabhupada said, when 75% of all the impurities in the heart are eradicated, the devotee achieves steadiness and then they're no longer distracted in their execution of the, the devotional service. That 25% uh, needs to be worked on, obviously, but without reaching that 75% of freedom from material impurities, then uh, one cannot go to the next platform, which is Ruchi. Ruchi is uh, means high, a sweet taste, that the bhakti has a very sweet taste to it. So when the mind and senses are no longer distracted in chanting and in serving, these are symptoms of steadiness. There is steadiness of mind, steadiness of speech, and steadiness of physical activities. A devotee can understand how steady they are in mind, but how easy it is for them to think of Krishna. If it becomes difficult to think of Krishna, then we have some work to do. <laughs> Thinking of Krishna should be so easy that immediately, as soon as we want to think of Krishna, we can think of Krishna easily. We can, his form will easily appear in our mind. That steadiness of my, uh, mind when we chant Hare Krishna, of course, the mind wanders. So the more we can keep that mind focused on the sound uh, without these distractions, then that becomes a feature of steadiness in mind. Steadiness in speech really means not speaking unnecessarily or foolishly. And steadiness in bodily activities means to be regulated in our sensual needs like that. But these are different kinds of steadiness. But the real steadiness, which is the sum total of the three categories of steadiness, is that we are fixed in our devotional service. We're not distracted by uh, external uh, environmental attacks coming from the mind, from the body, uh, from uh, our day-to-day -day activities like that. But sometimes we see people are very much fixed up in doing their duties, but they're not so fixed up in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. That's not steadiness, because here's where the steadiness actually takes root and expands itself out into other areas of activity, such as our steadiness in mind and steadiness in speech, steadiness in uh, physical activities. 
someone may, may be studying studying their dutiful activities, but that doesn't necessarily their study. They just might have a strong sense of duty. But it's also a good indication too. So nishta bhajana kriya or steadiness in doing our bhajan comes by regular hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, worshiping the deity, like that. So even if it may appear that one is not steady in her duties, still, if they're steady in these activities, they'll eventually reach um, 75%. That is called nishtya bhajana kriya or steadiness on the platform of nishta, which is steadiness. When one is not distracted by the desire to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, then prema and ruchi will start to develop a higher taste. If we can remain steady, of course, when we say 75% of the impurities of the heart must be removed. This is a described in Shastras, in uh, Bhajana Rahasya by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and in other texts also by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and in Srimad Bhagavatam, that there are 16 anarthas, four categories of four. There is anarthas in philosophical misconceptions. There's anarthas in pious activities. There is anarthas in impious activities. And then there is anarthas by way of committing offenses. These are the four categories. Each category has four subcategories. The four categories of anarthas in philosophical misconceptions is not knowing the difference between the body and the self. In other words, we have a body, but we're not the body. We should have at least a theoretical understanding of that principle and not think what happens to the body happens to me. I am different than the body, but I, I am in the body and I use the body but I am not the body. The second is not knowing the position of Krishna. What does that mean? That means he is the ultimate principle of all existence. Everything comes from him. And he is the source of uh, what we say, whatever we need in devotional service is coming by way of the mercy of Krishna through different channels, through either through the material energy or through, through the spiritual master. Um, not knowing the position of Krishna is an anartha. Not knowing how to execute devotional service. In other words, there's rules and regulations and uh, uh, sadhana, particular types of sadhana. And therefore, one should know what is, you know, bhakti and how to execute bhakti. What are some of the higher principles of bhakti and how would they manifest in my, in my practice of bhakti? One should have a clear understanding of that. And these are all described in the Shastras and given in the lectures by Srila Prabhupada and his followers, particularly in Nectar of Devotion. Srimad Bhagavatam, we can find most of these. And the last one is not understanding the difference between other spiritual philosophical teachings and the, the, the basic principles of bhakti. For instance, not knowing the difference between personalism and impersonalism, or um, not knowing the difference between bhakti and including material activities as part of bhakti and thinking they are also bhakti. 
So these are the four philosophical misconceptions. The four misconceptions of pious activities are one, the desire for elevation to the higher planets. Two, the desire to enjoy material sense gratification in a nice way, but still the desire to enjoy. The authorized way of enjoyment. <laughs> Uh, three, uh, uh, wanting to develop mystic yoga, wanting to be elevated through the process of mystic yoga, and for liberation. And these are the four types of anarthas that rise from pious activities. So those who have pious activities, they have an opportunity to develop these four categories. But one should see that these are actual obstacles in the path of bhakti. Uh, four impious activities are envy, uh, duplicity, fault finding, and uh, pratishta, wanting to become famous by the execution of devotional service. And these are the four categories like that. And um, there's another one, and that is trying to enjoy things that are not meant to be enjoyed, such as breaking the four regulative principles, illicit sex, meat eating and gambling and intoxication. These are what we say uh, pro prohibited material activities, and they are in the category of impiety. And then the last category is offenses, offenses to the deity of the Lord, offenses to the holy name of the Lord, offenses to the Vaishnavas, and offenses to people in general. So one should carefully avoid the offenses. Offenses are the more difficult category to uh, become free from. It's easy to commit offenses. And not knowing the offenses, we commit offenses all the time. So we have to know the offenses and carefully avoid the offenses like that. So as we mentioned earlier, steadiness manifests itself when 75% of these 16 anarthas, that means 12 of these anarthas are eradicated completely within the heart. And then one can make progress to the next stage, which is ruchi ruchi, means there is a sweet taste. This is characterized by one verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, Brahma Bhutma Prasanatma Nasoshati Nakangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Lavate Param. Uh, Brahma Bhuta means the spiritual platform. Prasanatma means joyful. One who reaches the spiritual platform becomes joyful. Nasoshati, Nakongshati, doesn't hanker, doesn't lament for material things. He is equally disposed to all living entity. And then one becomes uh, situated on the platform of devotional service and is tasting the happiness of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So again, in order to reach the platform of nishta, we have to be very careful to avoid those things that cause us to um, stay within the material energy. In other words, these are, these are the narthas. Okay, so needs a little bit about steadiness and devotional service. Again, to reiterate the, the uh, point of steadiness, steadiness is steadiness in devotion. It doesn't necessarily mean steadiness in activity, but steadiness in, in one is constantly devoted to Krishna uh, in the activities of devotional service. They may deviate a little bit because they haven't reached complete purification, but still, essentially, they are fixed in devotional service. So we need to strive for that and practice very carefully. 
then we will be able to taste the sweetness of Krishna consciousness in a continuous way. Krishna consciousness is a process of always being joyful. Uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, this process is joyfully performed. Uh, what is that verse? It's 9-2 in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, uh, this is the most secret of all secrets. It is, uh, it is joyfully performed. He calls it the most secret of all secrets. He calls the, 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 the teachings of devotional service to be secret of all secrets, yet we speak about it all the time. Why is it called secret of all secret? It's because even though you hear it, if you don't understand it, it remains a mystery to you. So those who know it, they, can, they know this secret, and therefore they can execute devotional service and remain joyful in the execution of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so thank you. And there's, there's some points to think about. So we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories to yourself. So um, you mentioned preaching and steadiness, and we are finding that preaching is has become tougher uh, because there's no physical association. Lavanya, it's good, Maharaj. It's your duty to encourage people. I think Shilpa Mataji is talking, Prabhuji Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Can you hear me? Now we can. Uh, hear. Now I. Now I can. Now oh, I lovely. Can. Lovely. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Mahambal obeisances, all glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories at your lotus feet. You mentioned preaching, Maharaj, and it's, coming it's becoming a little difficult in preaching because um, we're missing devotees. There's no physical association with devotees. And... Um, it's very, it's becoming slightly difficult to just meet online all the time. And uh, so as part of our Bhakti Viksha program, a lot of devotees were actually missing physical association. We started going through the Vaishnav etiquette manual again, uh, because just to remind ourselves of behavior, because I think sometimes when you have no association, um, you forget how to behave. Um, That's, yeah, that is the characteristics of uh, not having physical association. Um, of course, in any association of devotees, we uh, get inspiration in our Krishna consciousness. We get the knowledge that we need. We also get opportunities to practice those qualities that are, are the nature of the soul the soul's natural qualities, which are the qualities of the mode of goodness. All these things come by devotee association. Yes, we were somewhat restricted from developing these things in a complete way when we're through this uh, media, but the best we can, we should try anyway. Uh, and I don't know, it depends on where you are in the world. Fortunately, where I am, by Krishna's mercy, we have temple activities, we have classes, kirtans are going on, um, people are coming to the temple, and the temple is wide open, <coughs> there's no restriction, there's restrictions on the external, like just, like just today, a few days ago, the government is now enforcing uh, wearing of the masks, in larger gatherings. So now devotees have to wear them when they come to the temple. But that was just a couple of days ago. 
this new restriction just appeared. So, uh, but still, um, so I don't know what your situation is in the areas that you're in. Everyone's in a different area. But if there's any possibility to congregate in small groups, such as groups of four and five, and six like that, then that would be an opportunity. I think uh, there is a limit for congregation, but in certain countries, but still you, there is, we can go to that limit and bring about some association on that level. And how, how, how strict we want to follow all these restrictions? Well, that can also be, uh, you know, adjusted like that. Just have to you just see what you can do. But in the meantime, we have to use what, what's, what's available and that's this online association. Krishna, I think um, Shilpa Mataji got dropped off. Please repeat. Shilpa Mataji got dropped off, I think, uh, Guru Maharaj. Um, oh, okay. Her microphone is closed. Yeah. Hey, now it's open. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. At the um, Bhaktivedanta Manor, we're still carrying on with our online program as part of um, School of Bhakti. The School of Bhakti is doing well, really well, with new devotees. Um, the other day we had 500 registered for the Gita Life class. So it's very popular with new devotees. Uh, we're getting so much uh, footfold with new devotees on our online courses. Yeah. But we're finding that regular devotees um, are really missing association of serving. Um, and it's just to keep that going, uh, not to be able to go in and do our regular service. It's really hard to um, imbibe, really, Maharaj. So any words I, on that, Maharaj? Yeah, I find, I also, to some degree, uh, feel the effects of lack of association. One of the things that keeps me going is extra japa. So I'm chanting throughout the whole day, aside from chanting my rounds early in the morning. So I get much inspiration in order to keep going in my online services. And sometimes I do two, two programs online a day. So yeah. Um, and just to find the inspiration, I'm finding, I'm getting a lot of inspiration from chanting. So we should also think, oh, well, I have the holy name. The holy name is available. The holy name is Krishna. Let me associate with Krishna by chanting more. Just to relegate ourselves to our, our prescribed and out of rounds. I don't think it's enough in, a, in this particular time period. We really need to chant more. And now we're in Purushota Mas, which is a month which is recommended that we increase our chanting. So it says if you're chanting 16 rounds, chant 24. If you're chanting more than 24, chant 32. If you've been chanting 32, then chant 64. Why not chant more rounds? It doesn't take much. What I do, and you might find this as a practical tip is that uh, throughout the day, I'll just pick a half hour and chant four rounds. So maybe four or five times during the day, I'll chant four rounds. So, you know, if I do four, four times four, 
throughout the day, along with my 16 rounds early in the morning, I reached 32. So uh, you chant 16 rounds early, then you can chant four rounds before lunch. You can chant four rounds sometime after lunch in the afternoon, and you can chant another four rounds uh, in the evening before you take rest. Uh, like that. Go out for a walk. That's recommended. Chant and bring your beads with you and chant then. This keeps, this is the inspiration that keeps us going in Krishna consciousness is to increase the quality and quantity of our japa. And then when we won't, we won't feel like, well, you know, how can I get through this period? Holy name will get you through and, and help you rise above it too. Yes, Marge, you're totally right. The Japa is fantastic at the moment and this lockdown has done wonders for Japa, um, but mm -hmm. it's just association. Sometimes we miss our friends, devotees, um, but you're right. I think it's take advantage of the situation to go further into reading and doing our japa mm -hmm. instead of contemplating about missing devotees. Yeah. Uh, and then when the opportunity comes up, take the association. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, we have to be a little bit more of a a recluse it's not that effect of spiritual development that there are sages and saints who are just absorbed in their own bhajan they don't interact with people in general uh, they're getting a taste from that but we can learn that there's, there's a side some of us are more extroverted, some of us are more introverted. Those who are more introverted find it easier in these place, in these situations to stay steady in devotional service. But in any case, we can develop that, that characteristic of uh, more inner development of our spiritual life. Thank you, Marge. So many. Hare Krishna, Anjali. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. You're driving, Maharaj. No, we're just going to the temple, Maharaj. You're in your car, though, right? Yes, we're going to the temple, Maharaj temple. Oh. Soho? Yes, Maharaj, can you hear me? Yeah, you're going to Soho temple? No, South London. It's called South London. South London, okay. Yes. Maharaj, I have a question about the steadiness. Uh, it has really uh, went really well, actually, for uh, in lockdown that reading, chanting has improved. And Shilpa Mataji correctly said that we're really, really missing the association. But uh, with me, because uh, I'm, I was, I'm working full time, so I'm saving so much time in traveling. I'm not traveling to central London. And uh, so it's giving me so much time. And my routine has set from morning to evening. But uh, thing is that I, in lockdown, I have noticed that my routine is so much set that uh, I have started to get complaint from the family that I'm not spending much time with them, but I'm more focused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more focused on my routine that everything happens on the time so that I get time for everything. Uh, so how, how do I do that, Maharaj? Because it looks like I used to spend more time with family when, when it was not a lockdown, but I'm spending less time now with family and I'm more focused on my routine. Jai. <laughs> no. 
That's my answer, Jai. <laughs> yes, that's my answer as well, Ma. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> But Maharaja, I struggle to balance it. It just, we have only 12 hours in the day and uh, it just has to be. Do you know anybody who doesn't struggle? <laughs> if you want to be yeah. struggle free, Prabhupada said, go back to the spiritual world. <laughs> as long okay. as you're in this world, you're going to have to struggle for what you see, what you see valuable in life. There's always struggle. Everyone struggles. When struggle, it shouldn't be something that we think is bad. It's something that we have to accept and uh, overcome. That's all. Yeah. So, so how's uh, the compromise? Sorry, man, it's gone. Uh, you, you know what to do. You don't have to ask me. I don't know anything, Maharaj. I'm so dumb and thick. <laughs> Maybe you're just too detached. <laughs> no, Maharaj. I wish I was. I struggle to balance things. I just, maybe, I, I don't know. Me too. <laughs> but I'm finding, if you examine your schedule, you just start to see, you know, sit down and write down your schedule really with much detail and see where there's opportunities for adjustment, where there's some gaps that you can fill in, where there's something that you might want to switch to another time, you know. This is part of Krishna consciousness is adjusting our routine, which to make it more conducive to our spiritual practice. Yes. Some extra, some austerities are good. Yeah. Perform a little extra austerity. Yeah. Uh, eat less. Yeah. Sleep less. When you eat less, you got more time. When you sleep less, you got more time. But don't, we can't do it at the expense of our health. We just have to see where we can adjust. Can I ask one more question, Maharaj? I just related to, uh, to the austerity and other things, like you said, balancing. I really, because um, in your class class also, you mentioned about the like push of the month, what we should do, what we should not. And um, it was said that we should try to do um, like take bath before uh, in Brahma Murat and do the Mangal Arati as well. And uh, I really have never done my deities Mangal Arati. And uh, I was thinking I should start Mangal Arati, like I should do at least in push of the month. But uh, I'm really worried and concerned about it. Uh, that uh, for my benefit, benefit, if I wake Krishna up for a month in Pushottam month, and then uh, I stop doing Mangal Aarti, then wouldn't it be like that I'm using Krishna for my own benefit to get more pious, bene pious piety for myself and I'm waking him, for hum him up for a month and then I will stop waking him up at 4.30. So, so do you think it's, it's a really good, it's good thing to do? Ask him. He's the one you're working with, so ask him. See what he tells you. <laughs> yeah, you ask him and he'll give you the answer if you just ask him. You might have to ask him a few times until you he can hear the answer, but just ask him in a humble way. And you'll get the answer. I'm not I'm not just joking, I'm just serious. Okay. Yeah, he'll tell you. Okay. I'll ask him. Okay. Krishna's there. He's not like he's some guy that you don't, you know, you heard about. That's all. <laughs> he's with you every minute. Yes, definitely, yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for more, both of the answers. Thank you so much. It was really helpful. And thank you for all the classes, Maharaj. It's just, 
we have no words to say thank you to you you know it just thanks is no word for it it's just amazing and it's really my for like it's bad that i'm not able to attend all the classes but it, it's just so nice that you're always there for us it's amazing well, and if the devotees are appreciating it and that's good that's an inspiration for me thank you there's no words for it maharaj thank you all glories all glories to you absolutely in agreement with anjali guru maharaj your classes have been the lifeline for us to survive this covid disaster thank you so much yeah i hope <laughs> covid disaster ki jai the disaster is our consciousness there's the external world is always a difficult place no matter if it has more or less forms of misery sometimes it's probably as a material world sometimes it's miserable and sometimes it's more miserable sometimes it's less miserable but it's always miserable so now it's more miserable so that means more krishna consciousness Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Uh, I was just wondering that uh, you spoke about that we can get to this steady state when uh, uh, this uh, percentage of anarthas are gone. And can we do anything certain to, to make this process faster or if we just uh follow and intensify our regular practices uh yeah, it works faster <laughs> the more time you give to krishna consciousness the more you will feel the effects of your of what we say your detachment from material activities and your attachment to spiritual activities it's a, it's also a matter of how much time you want to give to krishna to also give 100% of their time then they're in a better position than those that give 80%. Of course, quality is the principle, but still quantity helps to build quality. And by increasing the quantity, we're also pushing out uh those things that we don't really need. And we can fill that with Krishna consciousness. So yeah, its emphasis on on the process itself and chat um, more read, read more chat more read more uh what else can we do um serve <laughs> serve more yeah in different ways you have deities there you serve your deities nicely thanks to the ways you can improve get a get an altar for your deity you got an altar we'll get a nicer one <laughs> <laughs> i see you know, there's always ways we can think of how to improve krishna consciousness one of the things we can do is that we have to we're, we're restricted more in our on our movements so we're spending more time in one area so fix that area up clean it up spend more time cleaning more time organizing get everything more and more nicer so it looks more like a temple instead of a just a place to live yeah and i was just wondering because actually my uh, for me it is difficult uh, this difficulty is that yeah i'm i'm not steady and i notice that uh, when i focus more on krishna consciousness i can do it for some time and then it it drops and after some times it it's better again and it's like like a wave and um, i'm i'm just wondering all the time how could how, how could i avoid these uh, these drops well that's that's you're still on we're still on the the platform of accepting and rejecting when we say steady in the execution of our devotional service 
and steady means gradually increasing within the, the context of what we're doing already. If we try to go too too far too fast, we may also find ourselves falling back and not keeping up that standard that we uh, go up to. But the modes of material nature are also there. So sometimes the modes are more favorable and we're feeling the effects of the mode of goodness. Sometimes the modes of passion are more favorable and we're, then that mode of passion that increases the struggle of our execution of devotion. So we're still affected to some degree by the modes of material nature. But steadiness and devotional service and the activities itself, as we mentioned, on the mental activities, the vocal activities, and the physical activities, will help bring about a steadiness in consciousness. Like that. But it doesn't have to be mechanical. It can be inspirational in that we think of ways to uh, organize our day where we, we find ourselves not getting bogged down or bored or routine or mechanical. So sometimes we have to do different things in order to inspire inspiration like that. Especially with this particular time where we don't have as much association, so we have to create ways to stay inspired in our spiritual life. You know, read those books that you've been wanting to read. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm fortunate because here in Hungary it's uh, possible to uh, to have devotee association, and this is my my great fortune because for me this is inspiration. So when I I'm alone for weeks and weeks, then everything at some point becomes uh, mechanical. But uh, yeah. but. But uh, when I'm with others, uh, we can inspire each other, and there is variety, and uh, it's it's easier. So yeah, it's it's that's Krishna lacking. consciousness. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's devotional life. Yeah, take advantage of that. Yes, I I try my best. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Uh, well, mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Vivek here. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Vivek, Hare Mahal, Hare Mahal. Maharaj, I have this question, like you mentioned about uh, 9.2 Bhagavad Gita, most confidential knowledge, secret of secret. So is this like considered very confidential and secret because it's a knowledge of spiritual kingdom, knowledge about devotional life, devotional services? And uh, we treat ourselves as a body, not as a self. Is this because of that, or we treat ourselves as a material body instead of a spiritual being because of because of what? Mm -hmm. No. So my question was, sorry, Maharaj, uh, that we keep this chapter and also like uh, various initial verse that it's very confidential this is very secret knowledge which krishna has given in this chapter yeah so my feeling like my understanding is that it's considered very uh, confidential because it's a knowledge about the spiritual uh, kingdom it's knowledge about the devotional service and uh, it can be only understood when we treat ourselves as soul not as a body is that correct understanding or is this different reason for uh, well you want the basis for understanding it is applying your intelligence according to the instructions of the spiritual master in both understanding the philosophy and practicing the philosophy you this thing is called gyan and vigyan gyan means theoretical knowledge of the truth vigyan means practical application of the truth so vigyan is preliminary, vigyan is the goal. And so vigyan means realization. So when you receive the knowledge, you have to apply it. If you don't apply it, just like if you take up a trade and you go to a school to learn the trade, you don't really become a, a tradesman in that area unless you start practicing it. 
you could go to medical school for eight years, come out and have a diploma and put up your sign. But if you don't have any patients, you're not actually a doctor. Do you actually do it? So the knowledge we receive, both practical and spiritual, must be applied in our day-to-day -day life. And that will give you the realization of this knowledge. From reading comes understanding. From understanding comes uh, application. From application comes realization. From realization comes the development of spiritual qualities and devotion. So it's progressive like that. So hearing, reading, that's why the process really centers around hearing as much as we can. Constantly hearing about uh, the activities of devotional service, about the glories of the Lord, Thank and you, then Lord. when you get the, that knowledge, then you have to, then you start understanding things more and more. And when you apply it, then actually the realization comes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Krishna yeah, actually, we need in order for it to really develop, we need to hear from a spiritual master regularly. But I'm just giving you some general principles that you can apply in the day to in your day to day life. But when we are connected to the spiritual teacher, and then we get regular understandings, we ask questions, we get clarifications. We when we read something, we may not understand what. We're reading, we present that knowledge to the spiritual master, then it becomes clear, and then when it becomes clear, then we can move on it with no, with no uh, hesitation, with no confusion like that. So guru is necessary. Even if we haven't formally accepted the principle of spirit uh, initiation, that's not the point. The point is one should hear from Krishna's representative regularly. Thanks, Maharaj. I absolutely agree with the Anjali Mataji and Shidavi Mataji also. Like your nectars from last few days has really like given me lots of strength and lots of like change in my devotional service. So thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. May I ask a question, please? You're on. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My question is a little uh, very basic uh, understanding. Maybe something is uh, not all right over here. But uh, whenever I wake up in the morning, the first thing you know I want to say and I say is Nitai Gaur, Nitai Gaur. And then I realize, but I haven't paid obeisances to my spiritual master. I haven't paid obeisances to Srila Prabhupada and then taken the name of the Lord. So I was wondering, how uh, the sequence should be first you pay obeisances to the spiritual master and then the disciplic succession and then you approach the lord but whenever i think of krishna Ma, the first thing comes to my head is nitai god i don't Good. know if correct or not yes that is correct <laughs> so you wake up you say nitai god you offer your obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, your spiritual master no problem. <laughs> okay, thank you. This is not a, you know, a, a program of, you know, stiffness. The idea is to remember Krishna whenever you can. So, yeah, we pay our basis to our spiritual master, but 
if you, as soon as you wake up, if you think of Nittai Gore, hey, your whole day is Nittai Gore. Shamaraj. I will. I guess Shamaraj, Uh, uh I had talking. I, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing something, but I'm listening to you. No, same. no worries, Maharaj. So I was just thinking that like um you know uh, usually in a Kartik or a Purushatam mass when we're busy with work, then we say, oh, I wish I had more time. I wish I didn't have to travel to work or I wish I could be in the Dham. <laughs> and so uh, it, it's just really interesting, like the mind and uh, human psychology that now we have the opportunity to somewhat sit peacefully and, you know, absorb and and we want to be doing something else, even if it's Krishna conscious. Yeah. Man, the man who is in New York wants to be in Puerto Rico, and the man who's in <laughs> Puerto Rico wants to be in New York. Exactly. <laughs> I, I remember speaking to, uh, when we were really in uh, the midst of COVID, I was speaking to uh, our uh, Avaduta Nitai Prabhu, and he explained to me that I guess uh, wherever he is or where he was, they, you know, at one time it was war stricken. And he said to me, he said it in good spirits, but he said, at least we don't have, you know, bombs going on outside. And I, I know everybody's struggle is relative and we're not dismissing anybody, but it's like, you know, he was just saying, he was just telling me what they went through for most of their lives, you know. And it, and it is a bit of a wake-up call, you know, when we really think of it. I wish I could help, come and help you, Maharaj. I want to be there and help you with whatever you're looking for. Well, this mosquito is attacking me. So oh, no. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, flush him out here. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, I want to be there with you to uh, take away your mosquito uh, trouble. Or maybe I'll be in bigger trouble than the mosquitoes, so I don't know. Pray to the, the demigod of the mosquitoes to help uh, relieve the problem. We'll do that, Maharaj. This guy is really fast, and he just, he's like a... <laughs> He just attacks, he just jumps on you. Yeah, yeah. He's a real vicious guy. <laughs> anyway, it's my problem. I'll find it. I'll find him out. It's hard to sit down because he keeps attacking my feet. Oh, no. Yeah, That's all right. I guess I had some karma, mosquito karma do here. I, I have some major mosquito karma whenever I travel. <laughs> this guy is really like, he's like the Sinapati Bhakta of mosquitoes. He's a general. Oh, no. One of those. He's intelligent. <laughs> Any luck? Uh, the only luck I have is I got to keep moving. <laughs> it's quite vicious too. You can imagine. 
is it the season for mosquitoes or are they just it's, like and somebody came in and left the door open and now oh i got i got my karmic reaction <laughs> so what can you do but i'm listening to your questions go ahead <laughs> Maraj, I wanted to ask one more thing. I think you may have mentioned it, but we heard it in a, in a class that His Holiness Indra Dimna Swami gave. And he told of this one verse, which is spoken by Kond Kondilya Muni, if I get the name right. Sandilya? Kondilya. K I think he said K-O-N-D-I-L-Y-A. There is a Sandilia. I never heard of Kondilia. I heard of Sandilia. Uh, uh, I, I, I just... Uh, oh, Sri Devi, Mother Sri Devi says... Oh, Shandilia. And Sandilia is a famous sadhu. Uh, I wanted really? to know about him. Sandilia? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, there's a lot two about you know who knows a lot about Sandilia? It, it was in regard to this verse, Govardhan Dharam Vande Gopala Gopa Rupinam Gokulutsava Me Isanam Govindam Gopikapriyam. I worship Gopal, Gopal, the lifter of Govardhan, who has the form of a cowherd boy. He is the festival of Goku and the supreme controller of all. He is Govinda and the beloved of the gopis. So Maharaj said that by chanting this mantra with devotion in this month of Purushottam, one will attain Sri Purushottam, Krishna himself. Anyway, I, I just wondered who he was. Yeah. Everything has to be done according to the direction given. And it's mm. also done at, at the right time. Mm. and in the right consciousness well, all those three the right time, right consciousness and according to the way it's both meant to be then the results are perfect like that mm. thank you Mark Okay, I don't want to bother anybody with my present situation, but... Oh, I just, I just saw him. Huh? I just saw him on the right. Yeah, I saw him just so fly he's around. On, he's, a, he's on the screen now. Yeah. yeah, he must have been on the screen, yeah. He just came on the screen, yeah. Yeah, there is. Did you get him? Oh, he's not going to... He's not going <laughs> to... He's been trained. He's like a he's like he's like a marine green green beret mosquito here. Kamikaze training. The best of all mosquitoes I got. Anyway, what can you do? Guru Mara, do you have some repellent spray of some kind? Well, it's too late now. <laughs> no. But at least he will stay away from you until you get someone to get him out. I'm okay. I oh, have um, malaria or something there. Uh, he's he's huge. I can't believe it. He's actually, you know, he, he can you can even see him when he comes in front of the screen. He's so big. Yeah. He's getting fatter by having a party on my body now. <laughs> mosquitoes okay. can cause malaria. That's why it's very concerning that he's around there. Hmm. Okay. Right now I'm dancing. <laughs> my battle. Okay, so I will, we'll, we'll end here because it's actually quite late anyway. So we'll see everybody tomorrow. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Very much, Maharaj.
थैंक यू गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा